that City will never and play like ever, this ever again. They will never, mm. ever be able to play like that ever again. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. We're going to do a very quick uh, preview to the Champions League games coming up this weekend. Let's say quarterfinal fixtures, massive games. There are four matches on Tuesday and Wednesday, and there are four guys here. I'm going to give everybody one game. One game for everyone, okay? We will start with Tuesday's games. Tuesday, Arsenal, Bayern Munich, Danny K, go. In the spirit of the Lord preparing a table for us in the presence of our enemies, the last time Arsenal were in the Champions League, Bayern Munich decided to disgrace Arsenal. That was at a very trying period for Arsenal Football Club. And Bayern took advantage of it and they disgraced Arsenal. 10 2 on aggregate. Oh my God. God being so good, Bayern Munich are going through a trying time. And God has delivered. Oh, on a silver platter. Silver platter. Oh my goodness. Oh my Lord. Oh my days. On way uh, Tuesday. Yes. At uh, the man is 6:45. Yes. Tuesday. Seven. Thank you. Tuesday 9 p.m. The tie is over. <laughs> Bayern, no, no, wait, no. not the game, the tie. The tie, tie. Oh, the, as for the game at Allianz Arena, it's an excursion. Okay. Bayern concede too many chances. And football is science. Who? Things don't just change like that. Mm -hmm. Arsenal's defense, I'm not talking about the back four. I'm not talking about the midfield. I'm not talking about the, I'm talking about the structure, the defensive structure. Look, you suffer before you create chances against Arsenal. And Man City, over two legs, even score one goal to show you how strong this Arsenal defense is. He went to Anfield. Papu suffered to carve them open. Everybody is suffering. Everybody is suffering. It's a rock solid defense with a top class goalkeeper in Raya. Arsenal is not just winning this game at Emirates, they are winning it and they are winning it good. Because they will create their chances against Bayern. They will finish their chances against Bayern. Saka was resting. The hurricane is the, coming. Oh, His record Africa, against Arsenal oh, is phenomenal. Oh, Kane, yeah, you score. Well, at least over the two years, you get for one goal. As for Kane, you score. <laughs> but the point is, Arsenal will win. As for this thing, see, forget the... So there's no any deep analytical anything. That result, that tend to... It's turning around for my good. <laughs> yeah, you are team. telling me Arsenal will beat Bayern 10 2 on aggregate. Oh, no, not 10 2. <laughs> no, he said he's turning around. No, ten two. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't wait your humble. No, but over two legs, it will be Arsenal over 6.5. And Arsenal are going to? Over two legs. Arsenal With Bayern Munich knowing full well that this is the only way they can rescue their season. Oh, but Bayern Munich, they knew that the only way they could rescue their season was last week in the league. No. They against went, Dortmund. They went to lose. Bayern Munich, they knew that the only way they could. Saarbrücken. You know Saarbrücken. Yes. They are from Germany regional. Yes. They play regional this one. They beat Bayern. As for Bayern this season, they, you see, Bayern is not in the state where they can get up and say, hey, things are going bad. Let's turn up. Ooh, they can't do anything. Bayern are that poor. But there's Champions League heritage. What, cha what Champions League heritage? <laughs> Champions League heritage. What, what Champions League? Arsenal, they don't have heritage in that the is, You know what I'm saying. You are asking the question repeatedly. You are just Champions League heritage. Champions League heritage. heritage, it kicks in at a certain period. <laughs> if there was Champions League heritage, if it truly existed, Ankara Real Madrid would have been uh, uh, Champions League holders. It's not for one year City gave them. What's Champions League heritage that Man City have? Football is football. Football is football. Okay. Arsenal, quick. No problem. Uh, Real Madrid against Man City. Situ. Oh damn! Yeah, man. Um, I, I think I th listen. City that one is on Tuesday. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Listen, City, same time. City have not been vintage. They've not played well. They've not looked as fluid as they were last season. And last season, when City played against Real Madrid at the Etihad, and I know the first leg is going to be at at the at the, at the, at the new Bernabeu, but last season when City played against Real Madrid at the Etihad. It is, for me, in my opinion, the best football I've seen Pep Guardiola City play. It was perfection. And, and I said it after that game that City will never, 
and that play like Pep, this ever they again. will never mm. ever be able to play like that ever again and this season city's form has gone down and the funny thing about real madrid is when they play in the champion you cannot use especially on the card you cannot use any form anywhere to judge them you can't say oh they lead goals they lose they, 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 they you get chance against them it's just this club that has an aura of making or finding a way to get something to happen in Champions League football. And the fact that City's defense this season as well hasn't been as solid as it was last season. The fact that Pep Guardiola's team has struggled to, to find the, the tactical flexibility, that, that opens difficult teams up in the final third. Again, it's a worry. Curiously though, is it not instructive that in that said match that you say was City's best performance under Pep Guardiola, was the game where, in the minds of many, the players, especially in the second phase, abandoned the tactic. And if you recall, it was that game where after the match, we saw the video of Pep arguing with Kevin De Bruyne and De Bruyne asking Pep to shut up because he was asking him to do things and De Bruyne wasn't paying attention. Uh, I, I, I don't think that was why he asked him. He said he was just talking too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this season, we've seen Pep being a bit more fixated with control. And they struggle to match up to the heights that when players have a bit more freedom, that they could attain in that Real Madrid match. Yeah, I'm not sure if they abandoned tactics. I think I think Pep's worry was that De Bruyne will always De Bruyne is the is the is the most careless player in the City team in possession, and that is not his fault. It's because he tries the a lot of it takes a lot of risk. Yeah, of course. You know, he's trying to squeeze the ball into the play. So as he should, and sometimes Pep is not very comfortable. You know, his school of thought. But 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 my point is the City team we saw last season and the one we've seen this season are two different teams. And when City have played against top teams, City have struggled to break them down. Because I said it somewhere, and I'll say it again, because teams have consistently forced City to go wide. They've stopped City from playing through the middle. City's main man is not Kevin De Bruyne, it's not Erling Haaland, it's Rodri. Now, if Rodri is not able to dictate games, if Rodri is not able to orchestrate play, and the games are being forced to go wide, City do not have the, the bites that they had from last season. When you when you when City have gone wide, or last season when City were going wide, Jack Grealish was on a very in fact his best football he's played in City was last season. Yeah, true. Was great on the ball, he played well. At times when he played Riyad Maris or Bernardo Silva wide, they were brilliant. This season, Grealish is not firing. Jeremy Doku is coming to replace Maris is not firing. When Bernardo Silva has played wide, it's not been in fact City's best wide player this season is actually Phil Foden. It is Phil Foden. Who is also one of the best midfielders. Who's also... It, it's it's a, last weekend, he proved to be the best partner for Rodri. Yes. You know. So, whereas Real Madrid now can force it to go, go central and they can deal with them and contain them. And when they have the ball, they've got Vinicius, they've got Rodrigo, they can use their pace in those wide areas. It's a city though who do not have players on form or players who are good enough in those wide areas. So how do you think it's going to go? Then? Listen, I think I, I, I think it's going to be a game of proper two ties. I think Real Madrid are going to win at the Benabao, but the game will still be hanging in the balance at the Etihad, and time will come for us to talk about that. You know, I, I genuinely do think, you know, I, I don't know if it's just me, but I have not understood the, the fascination with Real Madrid this season. No, it's not I've not well. been convinced about no, yeah. it. La Liga has been very bad. All the teams are not... I, I have not, not been convinced about Real Madrid. I don't and play I actually, well, but... my, my personal opinion is I think City will actually beat them to qualify. But... In, over the tie? Yeah, over the no, tie. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just fixated on the... Yeah. Focus on the first leg. I, 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 I feel like City... City I, just... I, I think just to add before we go to the yeah. next two games, I think it will come down to what Carlo, Carlo Angelotti will do. I think if he can put the young guys in the middle of the park to be able to match... The, the movement, yeah. the off the ball movement, Valverde, 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 yeah. I think they will beat Man City. Yeah, they've got, yeah. they've got that. Because yeah. the City midfield don't do lots of running. Yeah. Intricate, then they walk in intricate. But if, with the energy these four guys have got, yeah. if you play the four of them, Tramani, Kamavenga, Valverde, and Bellingham, they can cause problems. They will cause big problems. And when City go a, wide, very, they're, they're not great. When City go wide, Doku, yeah. whoever is out wide is not great. Uh, 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 at you before I finish with coach, yeah. uh, I'm going to give you uh, Atletico and Dortmund. Uh, <laughs> two teams who are uh, not... be lucky guy. Hey, by the way, there's no Italian team in the quarterfinals. Yeah, I mean because season. Anatovic, Anatovic um, kicked us out. Uh, yeah, be brief for me. I want to finish with Barcelona and PSG. Anatovic give that out. to coach. 
two teams who have not been very fun <laughs> to watch. Yeah. It's not certainly not the way. It's gonna be a very lucky semi finalist in there. <laughs> and whoever gets them. Especially if you consider how that Dortmund first haven't been lucky. Who? Dortmund. They were the group of PSG, the group of Newcastle. Newcastle. Uh, yeah. For me, in the context of Atletico, if you consider how that first leg versus Inter played out, <laughs> damn, and how Inter managed to score just one goal, yeah, and even in the reverse fixture, all the chances Two that, down. so you sit back and you wonder whether or not against a team that is perhaps a bit more clinical, or can stretch them in varied ways, Atletico may not be able to get away with that because. It's hard to see what this Atletico Madrid team is good at. And that, for me, is the biggest indictment on everything that they've, they've done. So yeah. you can but see... But they're not even defending so well. No, they're not. This, so you, this season. So you can see Which players... Which was their forte? You can see Lodi... You can, at each stage of the build-up, you, at each, any department of the team, midfield, attack, defense, you can point to players who are good at what they do. Rodrigo de Paul, Lodi, Antoine Griezmann, who... And all... All of these. These days, you have Memphis Depay coming off the bench, particularly against Inter Milan, to provide that bit of invention and craft in the middle of that attack for them. But collectively, it's hard for me to make sense of this Atletico team and say, this is what they, they are good at. The danger here for me, and I think this is what gives Borussia Dortmund the advantage, in the sense that while they are in many ways similar to Atletico, in the sense that you cannot pin them down to one particular philosophy. They, in many ways similar to Liverpool, have been able to find solutions for each match that they play. So you would say that they came out of the group of death. You would say that they were not favourites. But on the balance of each of those games, you could say that they also played very well and were competent and even would say that they were value for their money. Yeah, they beat uh, Newcastle over two legs. And that, for me, is gives more credibility to, to everything that they've done in this season's competition, that whoever they came up came up against, irrespective of the players that they had, you could tell that they found a way of neutralizing them, and so they, they conceded less chances and were very clear in their mind how they wanted to attack. And in knockout competitions, that tends to serve you well um, more than sustained attacks that often will leave you susceptible at the back. Well, all the talk about Pep Gajula and how reactive or pragmatic he's become is because he knows that the team is a bit more susceptible to counter breaks and to the only way to avert that is to play with five center backs and then five flat or four flats central midfielders in those teams and so for me i think that my money is going to be on borussia Dortmund. yeah okay so dosman you get it over atletico madrid interesting one anyway uh coach you get psg Barcelona. Against Barcelona. Wow. Barca are struggling domestically, obviously. Uh, Europe looks like a place where they could make a bit of an impact, but they have injury issues as well. It's a, and, you know, there's so much uncertainty around Barcelona. I don't know how they... And this also looks like a swan song season for PSG and especially Kylian Mbappe. And they found new ways of finding solutions in matches that they haven't exactly been used to in the past. And Sicho mentioned it earlier in, the, in another episode about how they played against us. Yeah, that completely different uh, ways of finding solutions. They don't necessarily need I think need what, to, what Xavi has done well. With Barca? With Barca is the fact that he's realized that he cannot impose that tiki-taka way of doing it with the group. Yeah because they are just not capable of living up to the standard of that maybe, type of Maybe play. he can't coach it. No, not he can coach. I think he can coach it. You the think it's a personal issue? And yeah, I think it's a personal issue. That is what I think it is. So as smart a coach as he is, he's trying to allow everybody to play to his strength in order to see how well that will work in the collective interest of the team. On the part of PhD, I think they have one decent outlet, and that is Kylian Mbappe. And I think if the boy from Uruguay is fit, Ugarte? no, the boy who plays for Barcelona, who is more or less their Raul. captain, oh. Orajo, I want to see how, if I'm Javi, I match him up against Kylian Mbappe all day. It's a 1v1 thing. 
Even if he goes to urinate, you follow him there. <laughs> if he goes to wherever he goes, you make sure you are with him there and leave the other players to play. I think if Xavi can do that, I think Barcelona will have a chance. Because if you take Mbappe out of that PSG team, I think they will struggle. Barcelona yeah. now are not overly all, overly reliant on one single player. It's like everybody have come to accept the fact that, look, we all need to contribute our quarter in order to get the results of the team. So because of that, I think I want to give Barcelona a slight advantage. But look, is the, the two managers are Spanish. Luis Enrique and then Javi Hernandez. Enrique, don't forget, is a Barcelona product himself. So he understands the way Barca will want to approach this game. I think it could game. be the most boring game of the time. Yes, because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, he has the potential of being the most boring yes, game. Yes, because, is he... I think he cannot overly predict that Javi will come and do this. Because looking at Barcelona from afar, like I said earlier, they've not insisted on going the tiki-taka way. And that is going to put Luis and Nicky in, in a situation not being able to in decide exactly what they will do. So let's try this and, le and see how, how it works. Where is the first leg being played? Uh, in yeah. France. No, yeah, PSG, PSG are playing, playing in, in France. In France. Yeah. In France. So yeah. PSG will need to get a result to take to Spain. And the result shouldn't be the one that gives them only a one-goal advantage. I think the two-goal advantage will get them to qualify over two legs. But if they don't if they were to win by very slim margin, I will fancy Barcelona to go past them in Spain. So look, it's a game like he just said, has could the potential, boring. could be very boring. Yeah. But who knows? Within this, it could also be exciting. Just explode. Yeah. PSG look very unrecognizable yeah. from the team that we yeah. know from the last two years. Yeah. Like, it's incredibly you know, patient. They've gone to, I, I, so I give, I actually do give, you know, Luis Enrique Luis a bit of credit. I don't think a lot of people have given him credit yeah. because, because he had to work with the completely yeah, exactly. new the new new set the, the biggest team. credit you can pay him is that all the lapses and tactical defects, we used to mock them over. We're not saying that about PSG this time. Exactly. And look no, at the midfield. You see, they got rid of the people who were causing that problem. <laughs> stop it. It's a ah, top why should I stop? It's true. It's a, they got rid of the people who were walking on the pitch, uh, but were not giving enough the young man's side. And they focused on very, Mbappe and gotten the rest to work around him, which team. makes yeah, sense. Zaya Emery and uh, um, the Portuguese Vitinha. When is somebody, when is somebody and, uh, here who will spend Severi time on it? But when it's yeah. another person, then he's talking over me like he has not heard me. You know, what is the so problem? Has, do we have any problem here? No, we don't have a problem. <laughs> he, What's the problem? PSG, he has caused his own fight PSG, and he's fighting. PSG had finished <laughs> in the, in the semi-final of the UEFA <laughs> Champions League. Back to back. Then a certain gentleman came in who was not adding any value of the ball. And you, the tactical defense you are talking about. Messi his name. See, Why are you not mentioning his name? The, the, the proper World Cup winner. When they got ensuring. When they got rid of him. He's when they got rid of him. is comfortably in the league. When they got rid of him. Now, PSG are winning. Quarterfinals. Oh, the two he, years that Lionel Messi came to PSG. Tactical was a defect. Is it at times? He wasn't it, working. It is, it is very <laughs> he amazing. He was working. How the Ronaldo people still I'm, I'm want to continue. Yeah. They still want but to continue. But this has nothing to do with I'm this glad this that PSG stopped. I don't understand it. Look, that I'm just happy for PSG. That's that 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 time. That when the PSG fans went to protest that they wanted Messi out of their club, this is what they were talking about. They had seen I th I think, the I think the, the part of the PSG team that really like excites me a lot, or still with great experience, is the defense. No, but over you the, know, because they still got Hakimi. Yeah. They still got Marquinhos. Yes. Hernandez has come in. Yes. I will not have a Mendy. Mendy's Mendy. going to fit soon. Not but No, no, no. Mendes. The, not Mendes. Mendes, Mendes. The Portuguese Mendes. boy. Nuno Mendes. Nuno Mendes. Yes. That is a solid back. No, but if, if. Vitinha gives them good protection. If, if um, Marquinhos is not back. Because Marquinhos over the weekend against Marseille, they didn't play. Yeah. And defensively, they were terrible. Hakimi hasn't been great since AFCON, for them to be fair. Mendes has also been injured and in and out. But whenever he's available, he plays well. So if, if Marquinhos is back, he could play alongside either Danilo or Hernandez, as you said. It could work. It would work, I think. And if Mendes is also fit at the time, then great. But if these yeah. guys are not fit and Hakimi doesn't step up, then defensively... PSG's last game was against Rennes. 
Rene started. No, that was that was that was a cup game, but in the yes, in the, but in the cup game in, when they play Marseille, is what I'm telling so you. he's back. Yes, great, the brilliant. Because when they play against Marseille, he wasn't yeah, Nuno there. Mendes both played fantastic. They both got substituted brilliant. after. I so I'm sure they were rested. Issues. Brilliant, brilliant for brilliant. the game. <laughs> brilliant. Um, anyway, so that's our Champions League preview. What do you think is going to happen? Leave a comment below. Uh, again, hit the subscribe button, share the content. Uh, and then also make sure that, of course, you put the notification bell on so that when we upload new episodes, ta, you'll be the first. Ta, ta, you'll be like the, the first, way ta, 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 yeah, ta, you'll be the first to, to, to see it. Ta. Uh, Malam Go Podcast, of course, by Betway. We're grateful for all of your feedback and for all of your time as well. We'll be back again next week with another episode. Sicho, Achu, Achu, Daniel, you have to get married. Christopher. Achu will have to, in fact, it is not nice. It's ended. a very, it's you, you, you have to add it to the podcast. <laughs> yes. You have to get married. You have to get married. But my brother, now you have to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Fenty, we are out. Take care. <laughs>